Today I have Dean, CMO of Southern Cross University. Thank you for joining me. It's great to be here, Rosie. So we've worked together for the last three and a half, four years now, but you started at Southern Cross about five years ago. And when you started, you had five people in your marketing team. Well, yeah, we inherited a whole bunch of people who were on short term and casual contracts mm. and they had just been sort of brought into the university to get tasks done. And so my role was, I remember this distinctly, was to reimagine and reinvent the marketing function for the university. So that meant rebuilding from the ground up. Yeah. So you've got about 40 plus now. Yeah. And the, the remit of the unit has expanded dramatically. We now sales and marketing, not just marketing. So we have a student recruitment as well. And we also have some other engagement functions as well. Cool. So talk to me about growing that team because that size increase and that remit increase over five years is like no small feat. And I'd love for you to kind of share with the group how that's been, has there been any kind of key challenges or key things that you've implemented that you found have gone well and allowed you to kind of develop that, that group and kind of keep everyone engaged and move people that were doing the jobs into new roles? Like, how's that all gone? Yeah, I mean, I can answer to all of that. All of that has happened <laughs> um, because it's been a really wonderful journey and, the, and it's not over yet. But the main thing was that we recruited on a principles basis. We, we know what job needs to be done. That's kind of obvious what job needs to be done. But we wanted to make sure we had the right people who could grow those jobs and grow as, as members of the team. So we worked on our principles as a team and our values as a team really early on. And we came up with this really pithy sort of five or six lines that we felt really spoke to who we wanted to be as a team. And my mantra was that this is a rare opportunity to build from the ground up. So we have the opportunity to create the workplace that we've always wanted. And so we all got a sort of consensus going on that. And so as we brought people in, they had to be aligned to those values and those principles. And we would make sure that we get sort of a, a certain skill set in here with the, the right people. And then that would then determine what the next person was. Mm when I was on the panel to hire a couple of your designers, I really found that you know there were some people with very technical skills but maybe weren't quite the right fit and that was really yeah, guiding for you. One of the things, your journalistic background, yep. a storyteller, brand guy, and the Southern Cross brand has really shifted quite significantly in the last four years. And you've shared some research with us around like what that's looked like, but in terms of what you'd be happy sharing with a wider group, like what do you think are the key kind of things that have defined the shift in the brand sentiment for Southern Cross University? And then as a result, an increase in the number of students that are studying with you. Yeah, I think we've done two things really well. We have dived deep on who we are. We spent literally two years talking to students and staff and academics and researchers and partners with the university. We held a whole bunch of internal focus groups until we started to get a really consistent narrative about who this university was. And it was different to what we started with. What If you walked up to people and said, tell me what Southern Cross means to you, and you ask 10 people, you get 10 different things. And that was what was happening to us in 2018, 2019. So we spent a good part of two years talking to people until we got a really consistent narrative. So that means when we go out with the Southern Cross message, it's authentic, it's true, it's fair income. It is what's written on the box. And so I think that consistency has helped dramatically. The other thing that's happened is we've engaged fantastic partners like yourselves. To, and I mean that quite genuinely, you know, we've got other good partners as well, but amongst us, we're able to reach the audiences that resonate with that essence of what Southern Cross University is. So we're aligning the, the customer, we're aligning the students with a university, with an institution, with a, an experience that will mean something to them. And that has spread widely. I'm a great believer in the Seth Godin principle of the smallest viable audience. Mm. And that means that you grab the people who love you the most and you talk to them and you get a lot of information from them and you slowly build out. And that's what we've been doing. So we've been slowly evangelising and, um, and had all, the, all these people advocating for us and building out from our core base. So that's, we haven't tried to recruit into new markets. We haven't tried to be you know, massive broadcast marketing. We've built from the faithful, if you like. I think also like because you've got your regional campuses with quite kind of like people are really passionate about Southern Cross. I think what I saw off the back of kind of the floods and kind of the way that the Southern Cross, like the university was a base for a lot of people through the floods in Lismore. That really shone for me, the fact that you guys were committed to the community. And then as a result, you've kind of got the community coming back into you as well. That's a really powerful point. In 2022, cataclysmic, you know, almost biblical proportion floods hit the Northern Rivers in Southeast Queensland. 
and Lismore and the surrounding towns were really dramatically hit. The university that we have there is on high ground, so it was a safe place for people to come in the initial part of the crisis. But then we quickly moved to recovery and rebuilding and reconstruction and regenerating. And it's also meant that we've now got more tenants on the campus itself because a whole lot of schools and other organisations came to us in a crisis and said, can we, can we use your campus? We said, yeah, sure. And then after a little while, they said, actually, it's really good here. Can we stay? And we said, yeah, OK, let's work it out. So we've got a much more vibrant campus than we had three years ago. And we've also got a lot more activity coming and going from the campus. So the, the community is m now more aware of the breadth and depth of the campus than it ever was before. Do you think that's in, impacted or improved the sentiment around like, I like, I like that I studied at Southern Cross, I'm happy to be here? Demonstrably, yeah. Um, yeah like the, we, we've done some research of our alumni and they were kind of, about five years ago, they were kind of middling about ability or willingness to refer Southern Cross to somebody else. And now they're in the, you know, nine and a half out of 10 referring Southern Cross to fam family and friends. So it's a really high score now. Cool. This one's unprompted, I haven't given you notice on this one, but it just, you've always been very complimentary of us, which I always appreciate, but I do think you've done a really good job of getting your agency involved in as a real partnership, and I think you've built up really good trust between us and your teams. So put, to put you on the spot a little bit, like how do you get the most out of an agency? Like what's the kind of strategy or approach you take to, to bring people along on the journey in a partnership rather than just kind of that servant style approach? I think there's two ways to approach it. One is to, or there's two things that have to be done to, to make that happen. One is to understand what skills we have and what skills the agency has. Mm. And, and just when the agency's got those skills, let them run and really support them and ask as many questions as you need to, but really lean into those skills that the agency has. I'm, I hope, I'm not a suspicious client. No. I don't second guess the advice that I get from you guys. But the other thing that I think is really important is to and I know this can be a bit frustrating for you sometimes, but to introduce you across the team mm. so that a whole, whole different swaths of work units who you might not normally have a lot to do with understand what Student Garden, what Social Garden do for this university and why they're an important partner. Cool. My last question for you is, and we've been discussing this a little bit recently, is around kind of the key triggers that you would usually use as a university marketer throughout the year, like... We know open day's coming up, we know change of preference coming up, we know that students usually apply 18, or consider us 18 months out. We've been discussing the fact that those triggers are changing. What are some of the key things that you've either been surprised by or that you think would be useful for other people to consider around kind of those key decision makers and how they've changed? Yeah, well, well the thing I'd say the most is that they're volatile. Mm. And that's really thrown me a bit because I used to uh, tongue in cheek joke that university marketing was the most predictable thing available. We know exactly when the intakes are and exactly when the cutoff dates are and all that sort of stuff. So it was a really predictable cycle and it doesn't seem to be that now. And that's kind of exciting in ways because it means that the customer's far more mobile and far more dynamic. And that's the nature for most industries now. So I think the higher education's been sort of insulated a little bit by its very, very formal structure. But now what I'm seeing is that the decision-making period for people choosing to study is much shorter than it used to be domestically. It's certainly, you know, it's, it's a matter of six to 12 weeks now. People are saying, I'm gonna study next year and bang, they're away. Whereas, you know, previously it could have been up to six to 12 months. And I think that's, that's changing now. The other thing that's changed a lot is the sequence of the sales funnel, I don't think stacks up anymore. I think people leak, leak out, come back in at a different point, leak out, come back in at a different point. So it's nice and neat to put it on a continuum and I don't think that's the case anymore. Yeah, we've been seeing that where traditionally we'd run like a brand awareness, lead gen, application funnel, which we still do stick by as a principle. But every now and then you see you run a brand campaign and then all of a sudden one month you've got a ton of applications coming off that which you're surprised by and I think you've done a really nice job of while you still work to a funnel principle you kind of allow students to kind of move with when they're interested and when they're wanting to study and that's come through the advertising campaigns and through the automation campaigns and stuff which has been really cool. Yeah and, and we've had a really good year so we've managed to to grow our uh, our student numbers and, uh, and particularly our new student numbers mm. and the university's putting on more degrees for 2025 and we'll be marketing into those for in the next 12 months as well. Cool thank you so much appreciate it. Pleasure thank you.